So today we're going to look at the CNBC documentary that compares the cruise experience with the Waymo experience and analyzes their plans for expansion. This video is going to expose Cruise's claim to autonomy as a massive publicity stunt. Let's watch. We just went around a car with its emergency lights on. Um, it did it pretty smoothly, but now we're, ooh, now we're behind a car that's trying to park. He got out. Oh my gosh. And he, he kicked it. I'm gonna put him in the window. So this guy just kicked the car, and now we're calling support. This is stressful. Oh my gosh. Oh, he just spat on the car. Hi, I can't hear you that well. Every, everyone's okay. Okay, do you feel safe at this time? Yes. Okay, thank you for letting me know. I apologize to experience this. Those were the most stressful few moments I've had in a car in a recent memory. So what happened there is a cruise employee actually took control of the vehicle remotely to get the car out of its confusion. That guy who kicked the car is obviously a San Francisco local and knows that if you kick a cruise vehicle, it thinks it got into a collision and an employee is alerted to check on the vehicle. For the last year, everyone thought Cruise has had 400 vehicles operating autonomously in various cities with guys like Dan O'Dowd singing GM's praises. But looking at this new data that just surfaced this week, it suggests that employees, like in this case, were intervening every two and a half to five miles on average, and every cruise vehicle was supposedly supported by one and a half workers at any given time. These cars were not really autonomous at all. I took this ride in a cruise in September, but the company has since halted all autonomous operations nationwide. So what happened? It turns out they weren't ready for prime time. Robotaxis had driven into firefighting scenes, caused construction delays, impeded ambulances, and even meandered into active crime scenes. It's clear that there are still some glitches that need to be worked out. And this is only with a few hundred vehicles. The idea that thousands of vehicles could be hitting our streets in short order is what gives us concern. They're not ready for prime time. They interfere with our operations. They really have mucked some things up for us. It's impacting our public safety, and that's what we need to fix. We are testing in 15 cities, and when this vehicle behind us goes into production, we'll have a lot of capacity to expand. That vehicle will never go into production, and I apologize if this is distracting. I tore my UCL and fractured my wrist, but that crews might as well just burn all of their money then put that vehicle into production. They can't even make electric vehicles profitably and it turns out that their robo taxis were never fully autonomous. In Q3, crews lost $732 million and they only have $1.7 billion in cash left. So if they want to put this robo taxi into production, they need to raise money within six months and after they just ran somebody over and dragged them 20 meters across the road and news broke that they need one and a half workers per car to operate, I don't think investors are going to be running to invest their money, or should I say, burn their money. We've been in the car for about 30 seconds and we've already been honked at twice. I have to know, I think it's the fourth time we've been honked at in two minutes of being in this car. One thing you quickly notice is the number of cameras. They're always watching you. You've got one on the roof right here and you've got one in the front to make sure that you're not interfering with the wheel or any part of the front of the car. They're pretty clear on what you can or cannot do. Even when you open your window, something comes up on the screen and says, keep both hands and arms in car at all times. A pretty eventful ride. We went all throughout the city, nearly got into two accidents, got honked a lot. I won't say it was smooth, um, but it was interesting. And the best way to describe it is like being driven around the city by a student driver. Wow. Just what everybody wants. I love feeling anxious and stressed when I'm commuting. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I just, I get such entertainment from watching crews fail because it proves that Tesla took the right approach. They are not tarnishing their reputation by deploying robo taxis too early like Cruise has done. And they are using their fleet of half a million beta testers to accumulate FSD miles driven with a driver in the vehicle. Make FSD amazing first, show the data to regulators and then blow every consumer's mind in America that suddenly every Tesla can drive itself. I can't wait. We tried out Waymo as well. While Cruise had more robo taxis on city streets, Waymo has been testing longer. It did start driving without me having my seatbelt on. Cruz would not do that. So when you get in the car, you can push on a button that says start ride. 
And I would say so far, we're only a few minutes in, but it does feel a little smoother than the cruise robo taxi we took a week ago. And similar to cruise, it has sort of a navigation, tells you where you're going. This car seems to drive much more like a human driver, whereas the cruise really did feel like a robo taxi. Oh, this is interesting. Cruise didn't have this. It's something called camera privacy. We may use interior cameras to check on riders. Interior mics are on only when connected to rider support. So I guess they're telling you they're not listening to you, but cannot turn off the cameras, excuse me. Huh. That's interesting. It took the opportunity to squeeze through a pretty narrow space and did so fine. Actually doing better than the drivers around us. And I gotta say, one word to describe this ride, unremarkable. We didn't get honked at once. There was one incident where I thought maybe we cut someone off. It was uncertain, but it's been really smooth. You ask me whether this ride is ready for prime time. I mean, and would I take it again? I think the answer is yes. Silicon Valley is taking over transportation. That's why Waymo, who is created by Google, has a better product than Cruise created by General Motors. And Tesla also comes from Silicon Valley. Elon Musk was at the forefront of the internet revolution, creating Zip2 and PayPal. And electric vehicles are more reliant on software than ICE vehicles. That's why Legacy Auto has had such a difficult time creating compelling EVs. I mean, news broke this morning that Volkswagen has been spending $6 billion just trying to make their own operating system. I wonder how much more it'll take for you to finish. In August, cruise vehicles blocked an ambulance from leaving a scene where a critically injured pedestrian had been hit by a car in downtown San Francisco. As part of its efforts to work with the city, crews in San Francisco Fire reviewed footage from the vehicles to determine what might have gone wrong. My team was able to look at that video. We saw the same video, but we saw very, two very different things. They didn't see any problem with it, but it delayed us by a minute and 45 seconds, maybe two minutes. As the number of incidents throughout the city increased, crews reduced its fleet by 50% at the request of the DMV just over a week after the Public Utilities Commission ruling. But the final straw came after a pedestrian was struck in a hit and run by a human driver and then thrown into the path of a cruise vehicle. Responding to the collision, the AV pulled over, dragging the pedestrian with it. In its investigation, the DMV claims crews failed to disclose that the AV executed a pullover maneuver that may have caused further injury and concluded that its vehicles lacked the ability to respond in a safe and appropriate manner during incidents involving a pedestrian and suspended its permit to operate in California. So you can see why robo taxis need to be 10 times safer than a human driver before you deploy them. Two stuck cruise vehicles blocked an ambulance from getting to the hospital and the patient died. So far, Tesla vehicles have driven 525 million miles autonomously through its beta testing network. Tesla has 400,000 cars that drive autonomously with a driver in the vehicle and Cruise has 400 cars with one and a half people watching over them. And yet Cruise was in the lead. People don't recognize the progress behind the scenes that Tesla is making. They're way ahead. What I don't appreciate is when the CEO says that we are sensationalizing everything. I'd love to take him on a ride along on engine three someday. And he can see how challenging it is for us to get around the city as it is. Never mind when there's an autonomous vehicle that will not listen to the police or us. We just need to sit down and work together so they understand how we need to operate, what will impact us and what won't, and we need to be able to set up geofencing as well so they can stay away from certain areas when we have incidents going on. We have a hotline for first responders. That's one of the things we built in response to feedback. So both police and fire department can call a number and we can very quickly do things like relocate a vehicle that's in the way. Data about every collision is reported both at the state and federal level. We've shown video footage with first responders and things like that when it's appropriate, but that's that's got to be uh, very carefully controlled in order to maintain the privacy of our customers. You guys have 400 vehicles. This is way too complicated for your little science project. I mean, this is why Cruise has negative cash flow. They lose $500 million every quarter because they're bending over backwards to make their little tiny fleet operational so that they can look like they're a tech company. It was just too complicated to begin with and it proves Elon right that to solve autonomous driving, you have to solve artificial general intelligence first. If your cars don't know what to do every two and a half miles, then it's not worth the hassle. A robot driver can't get drunk, can't get tired. Is that an argument for having these on the road, for making the road safer? 
I think it's a really important consideration, yes. And again, we don't have data, but yeah, I would love there to be no more drunk driving incidents. My folks are the ones that have to respond to that and deal with the trauma and everything else from that. But Cruise commissioned its own study showing that its AVs are safer than human drivers. We analyzed the first million miles of driving that we did in San Francisco and collected a lot of data on human drivers in San Francisco so we could make a fair comparison. And what we found isn't surprising given that AVs don't get distracted, drowsy, or drunk. We see a, about half as many collisions overall, but more importantly, there's almost a 75% reduction in the kinds of collisions that cause injury. They're only sharing data around actual collisions, but certainly there are many other incidents that involve um, interfering with first responders, impeding traffic flow. We have no standard on which to base whether these vehicles are actually as safe as humans, safer than humans, or not as safe as humans, except to trust that these companies are telling us the truth about their safety statistics. So the Cruise CEO mentioned a 75% reduction in collisions that cause injury. And if we compare that to the numbers that Tesla shows, Tesla vehicles with FSD engaged go 18 times further in terms of miles driven before a collision than the national average. So Cruise goes four times farther and Tesla goes 18 times farther and Tesla's not making fire departments angry. As soon as 2025, we're gonna start producing vehicles that hit this sweet spot of a dollar per mile from a cost standpoint. The only thing that uh, stands between this business and profitability at that point is scale. In 2020, Cruise unveiled the Origin. It's purpose-built robo-taxi that features inward-facing seats and no steering wheel or pedal. This take up space, the weight, cost, all this stuff we don't need. And so we've reclaimed that space for the passengers and also for your luggage and other things that you might want. The company is working with GM to manufacture it and says it's getting close to regulatory approval. We're really fortunate to have GM as, as a partner, and I think that's going to be a huge asset for us. Like We are the only company that actually has um, this kind of connection with an OEM and can produce autonomous vehicles at scale. This guy's way over his head. Watch this. CNBC is going to cut straight to another company that's partnered with a manufacturer to create robo-taxis at scale. Watch this. Waymo is also developing its own robo-taxi with Chinese automaker Geely. It's currently expanding operations in Los Angeles with plans for Austin, Texas next. Uber was a good business because they would make three or four dollars per ride and they didn't have to front the cost of the vehicle. But at Cruise and Waymo, they're going to spend $100,000 probably to manufacture one of these robo taxis. And it's going to take them five or 10 years to get their money back because they're estimating to be charging $1 per mile. So this car is going to have to drive 100,000 miles to get that $100,000 back. Tesla, on the other hand, is so good at manufacturing and they were wise to adopt a vision-based approach because they're making enormous profits on the hardware sale. But now you're also adding in enormous profits on the software scale as FSD is ramped. And so Cruise and Waymo have all their money tied up while Tesla can fuel all of the growth that they want. At Tesla, even the manufacturing of the robo taxi is going to be automated. I'm talking robotic arms, I'm talking Optimus Bot, taking this thing nuclear. And if you wanna see what I think Tesla is going to be worth all the way into 2035, I provide a breakdown of my bear case, my base case, and my bull case in my members community. By joining the channel, you get access to it, and I'm going to continue to update it as new information is presented to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because you can't join my members community unless you are subscribed. And so I hope you enjoy your day.